Hey, how's it going everyone? In this video, I will cover how to integrate our API test with Jenkins and integrate JUnit reporting with it. So let's get started. Hey there, welcome to Automation Bro. If this is your first time on the channel, thank you for clicking on this video. I create new content related to testing and automation every week. And if this is something you're interested in, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of my new content. Okay, now let's take a look at how we can integrate our test with Jenkins. But before we do that, I just want to mention that I will not be covering how to install Jenkins locally in this video as I've already covered that in one of my previous videos. I will add a link in the description below for that if you guys want to watch that. For this video, I will assume that you already have set up Jenkins locally and also have your admin user set up. So now let's go ahead and set up our Jenkins job. So what I'm going to do is actually sign in here. So I already have a job set up here for WebDriver IO, which I did that in my WebDriver IO tutorial series. But for you guys, most likely this will be empty. And what you can do is click on the new item here. And then just simply type in the name of your pipeline or the project that you will be creating. So I will call this one my API tests. And I will select freestyle project. And I'm going to click OK. So here is going to give me a bunch of options that I can pick and choose from. So my description, I can add something about my the project over here. And I can say, um, I don't know, super API test. So we will put that over here. You can put anything here, doesn't matter. And it will tell you for the source code management. Now this is the most important part. So I'm using Git. So I'm going to do Git here. And this will ask you to put your repository URL of the Git repository. So I have already did that. I've pushed all of my changes to GitHub. And this is my repository here. By the way, if, if you guys haven't checked this out, make sure to do so as you will have access to all the code that I have explained in this video so far and also how to get started with your test. All right, so what I'm going to do is first of all, just click on this code here, then copy this HTTPS URL. I can do that by clicking on this copy button here, then go back to my um, Jenkins and I will paste that over here. So for my credentials, I already have that set up, but if you don't have credentials set up, you can click on add and then do Jenkins. So this will ask you to put your username password for GitHub. And so you can do that. You just put your Git username password and then just do add. This will add in your GitHub credentials for you guys. So this is done for me. So I'm going to close that out. And I'm going to select my credentials here for Automation Bro as well as my password. And then it will ask you which branch you want to pick. I'm on my master branch. So I will just go ahead and go ahead and uh, pick the master branch. Then you can scroll down and there's a couple other options that are important. So for the environment, we won't worry about that too much. For the triggers, we're going to leave it as it is. But for the build step, I'm going to add in my build step here. Now I'm using Windows. So I'm going to select the Windows batch command. If you're using Mac, you can probably choose the shell command here. So I'm going to click on Windows batch. And here I'm going to type in the command. So this is basically the same command that you would run when you're running your test. So if I come over here, so if you notice what I'm saying is clone the repo and then do npm install and then run the test by npm test. So this is the same thing we're going to do. So I will do first of all npm install. So this will install all of my packages. I'm going to add another build step and I'm going to do npm test to run all of my test. And this is nothing new. We have been doing that so far in all of our videos. And what I'm going to do for now is just click save. Then I will try to run this and I can do that by clicking on this build now button. So there you go. It started a build for me. And if I open this up by clicking on this circle over here, so this will actually tell me what it's doing. So if you notice here, it's doing npm install. And by the way, it also pulled all the changes for me. And I can see that here, I have my comment message that I put recently, which is the mock awesome report. And then it will do the npm install to install all of the packages. So I'm going to wait until all of this is done. And after this, it will actually run our test too. So I'll be back once this finishes. So the job is finished running. And if I scroll up, you will notice that it did npm install to install all the packages. And then it did npm test to actually run all our tests. And if you notice, these are the same tests that we were running in VS Code. And if I come over here, it is telling me seven are passing, nine are failing. Now what's going on with the failing test? So if you notice here, all the failing ones are either post test, put test, or probably delete over here. Yep. And the reason for that is for the get test, we don't really need a token. But for everything else, post, put, and delete, we actually need a token. So what's going on with that environment variable token that we created? So if you remember from one of our previous video, we created the dot and file and that dot and is where we were actually storing our token. And I can show that to you guys if I just scroll, go over here to my code. So this is the file we created dot and and we have our user token over here. I'm just going to quickly copy this. 
So this file that we actually created, I never pushed that in GitHub. And the reason for that is because you don't want to be pushing your environment variable or your secret tokens to GitHub because anyone it's open, anyone can access it and they would have access to that token, right? So that's not safe. And if you notice here, I don't have that dot and file over here. So what we can do is instead store that file in our Jenkins or in fact, any CI CD tool that you're using to do that. Let's take a look what we have to do. So I'm going to open up Jenkins in a new tab, click on manage Jenkins. And here I will click configure system. And if I scroll down, you will see the global properties. I have environment variables option. So if I click on this checkbox here and then just do add here, I can add in my token. So I will just do user token and then paste the token that I copied. And if I do save, now what we're going to do is when we will run our test our so let me close this quickly. So when we will run our test, our test will actually pick up that token from the Jenkins, which we actually stored there that from the global environment variables. So we're going to do that. I'll just click on build now here and see if that works for us. So this time it won't do the NPM install. I mean, it will do that, but we already have the packages stored, so it won't really take that much of time. There you go. It already finished and then it will actually run our test. So let's wait for this test to be finished and then we'll be back. All right, so our tests have finished running and this time if you notice we have 15 passing and just one failing and the reason this one is failing is because if you remember from one of our earlier videos, we created this delete user ID and we don't even have that resource already. So obviously it's giving us the resource not found error and we fix that in one of the next video, but I still save this test here just so we can see that we have a failure over here. So that's pretty cool. We actually have our test here, but uh, what's going on is we actually seeing this report, right? There's no report actually that's printing out here. So to get a report for the Jenkins, what we can do is implement something called J unit, which will basically allow us to see a reporting over here on Jenkins. So Mocha provides a nice J unit reporter, which we can use and it's called the Mocha J unit reporter. So this produces a J unit style XML test result, which we can actually plug it in, in our Jenkins and will show us a nice J unit reporting. So let's see how we can do that. So we can, I'm just going to copy this so that we can install this package and head over to our VS code. And then simply paste that here to install this package. All right, so my package is installed. Now to actually configure this, what I have to do is if I go to package JSON. Now, before we were using this mo reporter mocha awesome, right? To actually use the JUnit reporting, I'm going to add in another script here and paste that, change this one to test dash JUnit, and then update this to the mocha JUnit that we were using, right? So I'm just going to paste the command over here. Well, not this one, the one that we copied, which is this particular thing here and then paste that here. Okay, so this is good. So when we will actually run our test, it will generate an XML file for us and we can test that out. I'm going to do NPM test and then um, actually before running everything else, I just want to run one particular test to see if that prints out the XML report for me. So NPM test actually won't work. So I'm going to have to do NPM run test dash J unit. Let's see if this works. Okay, so there you go. It ran the test and this time it didn't give me the spec reporter, but instead it generated this XML file over here. Now, if I click on that, I can see the all XML data. So it will tell me the test that I ran, how long it took and the pass and fail. So that's pretty cool. So we will actually implement this with Jenkins and see how it works. I'm going to move the dot only here. So now I'm going to push my changes and then head over to GitHub. Okay, so I'm back here on GitHub. And if you notice here, I have my, if I go to package JSON, I have my mocha j unit reporting that I have added. So that's perfect. Now what we're going to do is take advantage of this and plug it in with our test. So I'm going to go back to configuration here on Jenkins. Now let's scroll down. Now in our post build action, I'm going to click on this. You will see a j unit reporting option here. So if you notice this one publish j unit test result report, I will click on that. So this actually finds the XML report for you. So you have to pass in the path. So my path I've stored it in the root file. So I'll just do star.xml. So it will pick it up from my root file. Okay, so we're getting this error that it cannot find star.xml because we haven't ran our job yet. So that is okay. So I'm just going to save this. And then what I will do is actually run this to see if it will work for us. All right, so I'm going to do build now. So by the way, if you don't see that JUnit reporting, you might have to install the plugin. And you can do that by going back to the Jenkins dashboard. And from there, just to um, let me just go here, manage Jenkins. And here you're going to have options for plugins, manage plugin. And then maybe if, like in this scenario, I might already have a JUnit one, but if you don't have that, you can install that. So I'll do JUnit. 
Okay, so in my install section, if you notice, I already have this JUnit available. If you don't have that, you can just go to the available, find the JUnit and install that plugin and that will just work for you. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my Jenkins over here. Just reload. So our test filled and that was fine. That's expected. But let's take a look at what happened with our JUnit reporting. So, okay, so I forgot to actually change our configuration. So not only we have to do the XML reporting there, we also have to pass in NPM test. And this time I'm gonna do dash J unit and change this to NPM run test J unit. So now if I save this and run again, okay, there you go. So our test ran and we have this weird console log, which we probably should remove, but anyways, but if you notice here, this is the important part. It says recording test results. And obviously our build failed because we have one failure there. And I'm gonna ignore that because it doesn't really matter if our test passed or failed. We can fix that one later on. But one thing to notice here is if I go to my last build here and click on test result. So this will actually show me my test results. So here, if I click on root and open that up, there you go. We have all our test results here. So the test that we ran total, and it will tell us the failed test, which is we have this one over here and then every other test that we ran over here. So that's pretty cool. So that's our JUnit reporting. Now this will actually, you will see that in your, so let me just click here. So you will also see this when we, for example, if I run this again, eventually you're gonna see like a dashboard here, which will tell you the amount of tests that we ran and the ones that failed. So I'm gonna run this again to see if it will generate for us. So I think it's usually for the first time it doesn't generate, but when you run it a couple of times, it actually generates a, some kind of a dashboard, which will tell you the difference between your first test run and the second test run. So there you go. This is the test result trend that I was talking about. So what I did was instead of running the entire suit, I just ran a single post file, pushed that to GitHub. And so that we can actually see a difference in our test. So if you notice before, when we were running, we had 16 tests. So originally we were just running these ones, the only two tests passed, then 16 tests passed. And then from there we did another build. It's showing us 16 passed. Then for the last one, what I did was instead of running all the tests, I'm just running the four tests for our post file. So I did that by just doing dot only and this was only for the demonstration purposes. Another option you have is instead of just doing dot only, you can add in a couple extra tests and then push that. So anytime it will have a difference from the previous build, you will see this kind of report over here. All right, guys, so to quickly review, we created our Jenkins job and configured it. We were able to pull changes from GitHub and then we also integrated our JUnit reporting with Jenkins. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you'd like to support me, there are a few ways to do that. First off, you can hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you have the means, you can also support me by buying me a cup of coffee. And I will add the link in the description below for that. Lastly, let me know in the comments below what other content you would like to see. That's all for this video, guys. I will see you in the next one.